Hello again and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial and you are welcome to this channel. To all old and new subscribers, you are very welcome. Please check the three dots menu at the top or look along the bottom row until you see a wheel or a little cog icon. Click that. Click the words higher quality or advanced and then raise the quality of the video to 720 or 1080p. There also should be closed captions available, I think, at the menu at the top. And if you're on a desktop or, or tablet at least, you can search among the, the many languages that are now made available by YouTube and find your own language so that at least you can get closed caption subtitles translated in your language. Today, I am continuing with the series called the Sin series. The first series that I did on the Master's Voice was the Russia and China series, where we were going through prophetic words that the Lord has given me here at this End Times Prophecy blog concerning the time when China and Russia will rise to ascendancy and basically encroach upon the sovereignty of the United States, first in the international space, before eventually coming with aggression and with very powerful weapons that the Lord has revealed these nations have unknown to America. They will come here, there will be war here, and the United States will not be victorious. The series that came after that was the America series, and that series was, I think, about four or five months long where I was going through prophecies that God has given me, showing what the real heart of America is. There are a lot of people in the United States and there are people outside the United States who don't actually know what the United States is like, that the USA has an underbelly that makes her extremely, extremely antagonistic to the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord has revealed through the America series that America is Mystery Babylon. Mystery Babylon is the end times nations that is discussed in the book of Revelation. The nation that is guilty of harlotries, the nation that is guilty of perversions, the nation that is guilty of defiling all the other nations and leading them astray, leading them into a shaking the fist at God posture. Nations that do not want to obey, the Lord says, have been poisoned from what used to be the golden cup that was held in Babylon's hand. And so the Lord says that he has cast the United States away and that he has pronounced a judgment that will not be rolled back. So at the completion of the America series, the series that the Lord then spoke to me to start is the Sin series. And that is a series that I am in. The different series are simply to make it easier for you as a visitor to the, master's, to the master's voice to be able to navigate through the different types of prophetic words that the Lord is bringing here. Please understand that this is not a blog where I, Celestial, am sharing my opinions. I am not sharing conjecture, nor am I attempting to, to pass um, any type of classroom atmosphere here. I am reading out the real-time prophetic words that I have received from the Lord. This is why I always ask that when you hear these prophecies, please make it a point to visit the blog. All the information for this ministry and the location of the blog is always in the description box below. Make it a point to go back to the master's voice and read the prophecies for yourself. The reason for that is clear. I say that on almost every video. God holds us responsible for what we know, what we hear, what we researched, what we believe, and what we did with what we believed. So if you hear these things and you just set them aside as conjecture or this is just somebody guessing, that is a discussion you're going to have with the Heavenly Father at the end of all things. But to those who are listening, chief among them myself, for I am the one who hear these words first from the Lord. The point of the master's voice is to bring us back to a place of worship. It is to bring us back to a place of sobriety in our Christianity. It is to bring us back to what is an objective baseline of the Lord's words, the Lord's constructs, and the Lord's holy scriptures that we are supposed to be living and walking by. So the reason that we are in this series now is because God is making it known 
first to America, I must say, because America does take up a great bulk of the information in the sin series as well, but to all nations of the world, the Lord is making it known to us clearly, even though they are clearly written in the scriptures, what sin is, that he is not happy with those who practice the things that I will be discussing. This is a graphic series. I am not going to tone anything down. Some things may not be age appropriate. So if you are in the habit of showing these videos to your children, I advise you to do so with wisdom, please. So this is part three of the series that I started recently. And this one was a series of, I think it was about six or seven visions. So on June the 12th, I had multiple visions in the same day. The Lord showed me a series of visions that I saw sort of stacked. So they looked like photographic plates. They literally looked like clear pictures that I could see like TV screens in front of me, laid out in front of me, but they went several layers deep. So it was one screen on top of another, on top of another like that. And I was looking at all the screens and because of the, because of the grace of the Lord, I could see all the screens at the same time. And all the screens were showing different pictures, different activities, different things happening. And the Lord was drawing my attention one to the other, to the other. But I remembered everything that I saw and I wrote them down. So the series is called Profanity of Profanities. And this is part four, June the 12th. And the title is Immolators of Desire. So I already spoke in the previous video of what immolation means. Immolation means to set your body on fire. So immolation is talking about setting yourself on physical fire with physical gas and a physical match or whatever you choose to use to burn your flesh. And it's a very ancient word and we don't really use it nowadays. But the reason the Lord brought the word back is because when you immolate yourself, the word immolate carries with it very focused connotations. It means that you absolutely know what you are doing. I spoke of perhaps burning your hand or setting something on fire mistakenly. Whenever we see fire outside of its place, if it's not in a fireplace or if it's not on the stove, we know it's not supposed to be there and we, we work very quickly to put it out. Whenever we see fire out of place, we work to put it out. But there is a fire that is burning among men and women today that is not being put out. And that is the fire of sin. Sin does not happen accidentally. The Bible actually talks about the process of sin. And it says that each one of us is enticed in our hearts when we are drawn away after our own selfish desires. And then it talks about how sin will become fully grown and it will be birthed out until it finally manifests. And when sin manifests, God says that nobody should say that they were tempted by God. So nobody should say, oh God, you're the one who put me in this position. The way Adam insinuated when he said, oh God, I was alone in the garden and I was fine. But then here, the woman you gave me, she is the reason I sinned. God didn't give Eve to Adam for Adam to sin. God gave Eve to Adam because Adam was saying that he was lonely and he was saying there is found no companion for me. So God brought Eve to him to be his companion. But when the two of them sin, Adam then spun it around on God or tried to and said, God, this is actually your fault because when I was alone, I was fine. But when you brought her, sin came. You can see that God did not buy that particular explanation because he punished Adam as much as he punished Eve. And so immolation means to set something on fire. And God is using the term here, immolators of desire, to show that people are setting their bodies on fire deliberately. People are sinning deliberately. Sin is burning in the members of the body of Christ first and burning in the members of people out there who do not know the Lord Jesus. And the Lord is saying that there will be great penalty for it because we don't actually know how close sin brings us to the edge of and then topples us into death. The word immolate means to kill yourself or someone else with fire, to destroy something by burning in a formal ceremony, to set something alight, 
with the intention of destroying it. And so the banner scripture is this, son of man, what is this burning in the flesh that I see? Why do the people rise up in their prostitution and dishonor me? Why do they profane the flesh that I, God, have given them in such revolting ways? I have made a man for my strength and a woman for my glory. Yet all I see is blaspheming of my temple, rubbish piled high at the gates, the eyes, the ears. All they do is hunger for strange fire and strange flesh. Pronounce my word to these people. You are altogether profane. And so, in this particular vision, I was standing in a man's bedroom. I was standing in a man's bedroom and his clothes were everywhere. This man was naked and he was, he was masturbating. And the Lord sometimes will preserve my modesty in these areas. And so he will cover sometimes the sensitive parts of people's body with what I always call a privacy dot. Um, a privacy dot is just basically where they put that dot over people's face. You know, when they're giving sensitive information, they put that dot over your face to distort your identity. So people can't actually see who you are. And God had put that over the man's private part but I could still see what he was doing. And the man was oblivious to my presence. I was standing right by his bed. And then I saw that there was another presence in the room and it was an angel of the Lord. And the angel of the Lord was standing there and he was extremely angry. He had a very long and extremely sharp sword and it was pointing directly over at the man's heart. So the angel was standing directly over the man and he had the sword pointed at an angle directly at the man's heart. And I could see from the way that the angle of the sword was that if the angel should thrust it through, he would not miss and the sword would go straight through the man's heart. So I couldn't do anything. And it was a very tense situation because I was there, but not there. I couldn't say anything and I wouldn't have dared to say anything anyway. And a bright blue light appeared in the corner of the man's bedroom. So um, if you could use this as the man's bedroom, I would say up in this corner, a blue light appeared and it was a hand in the classic stop signal. So the hand came in the classic stop signal and it was a very big hand. And when the angel saw the hand, he stopped as in he didn't move forward to thrust his sword into the heart of the man. And I could see that the angel was extremely tense and I could see that he was extremely angry. You know how when a man is angry, the whole body is taut and muscled and poised for action. And this angel was in that posture, but he did not move because of the hand that had told him to stop. And I could feel the feelings of the angel and the angel was filled with a lot of anger, but also strong betrayal. And for as long as the man kept masturbating in the room, the hand remained in the upper corner of his room and it stayed there in the stop signal. And it did not move until the man finished. So when the man finished, the hand disappeared and the angel also took back his sword and he disappeared. And I was the only one standing there and then the Lord also removed me. And then this is what the father said. This is the sin of strange fire. Touching your own body in order to kindle desires and hungers and yearnings that you were never meant to inflame in yourself. Once you have started this, there is no other remedy but to finish satisfying yourself because you are alone. The body is the temple of the Lord. It was never intended to be used as a self-starting engine. For this reason, says the Lord, a man shall leave his mother and father and cleave unto his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. And that's Genesis 2 and 24. The scripture says, the two shall become one, not the one shall become one. This is the strange fire among my people today masturbation, self-stimulation, 
both in the church and outside. And the Lord began to give me the understanding that the angel that I saw was the angel that was assigned to that man at birth. The scripture says, be careful that you do not despise any of these little ones. For I say to you that in heaven, their angels continually see the face of my father, Matthew 18 and 10. This verse is actually not just a story in the Bible. This is a real verse that every person is assigned to the care of an angel at their birth. And this is reinforced in Psalm 91, where the Lord says, thy angels, he has given charge over us to bear us up in our, in their hands so that we will not stumble or strike our feet against a stone. This is a real verse. And because this man was breaking the law of God, this same angel that had been watching over him since his childhood now had the right to strike him and had the hand of the, of the Lord not come saying stop. And the hand remained there stopping the angel for as long as the man was engaged in his personal sin. Had that hand not stopped him, the angel would have been within his rights to strike the very man that he had been looking after since he was born. And so we must understand that even when we commit sin, Although many of the times we commit sin and because there's no immediate repercussion, many people think that means that there's no penalty for sin. It means that we can just sin because there's no instant retribution as there used to be in the scriptures. But this is not the reason that the grace of God, the stop sign of God exists. The grace of God does not abound towards us so that we can continue to sin. Masturbation is a sin. It is not taught this way in many Christian circles. When mothers come creeping about the things that they have noticed their teenage sons doing, or when adults go creeping to the pastor because they have struggled with this thing for such a long time, they are not told the true cost of how this actually rips at the purity of their garment before the Lord. The Lord's words were clear. He said that the two will become one. The scripture does not say that the one will become one. He says that once you start to kindle desires and hunger in your body by stimulating yourself, it is extremely difficult to stop. And yet this qualifies as the sin of strange fire. Why is he referring to it as fire? In human sexuality, the rising and the heating up of the human body when it comes to matters of passion is referred to in many places in the scripture, especially in the Song of Songs, as fire. It's, it's spoken of as a heating up that has to reach a consummation point. And it is for this reason that Apostle Paul, who was a single man all his days, said, let each one have their mate, every woman, her husband, every man, his wife. It is meant to be two that kindle the fire and put it out. When one person begins to do this, you are stacking wood and lighting a fire that you were never supposed to light yourself. And the Lord says that once you have done this, you have no other remedy, but to finish satisfying yourself. Why would the father say this? Because the song of songs says, do not stir up love until the time. If you stir up fires in yourself and you are alone, whether through watching pornography or through self-stimulation, it leaves you with no choice but to finish what you started because you are not able to go halfway and stop. And the Lord says that this is the strange fire that is burning in the members of the body of Christ, and it has to come to an end. Clergy, pastors, leaders, deacons, mentors, ministers are not advising the body public especially in the house of God, of the dangers of this, how it attracts demonic entities. Demonic entities feed off the energies that come off the human body when it is engaged in sexual activity. 
In church, we act as if we are made of plasticine instead of flesh. And so many people are struggling with these things privately because they are not being told the true cost of it, that God will not always put a hand up and that it is possible for the angel in your life to strike you or even worse, for demonic activity to cleave to you. And then you start to attract demonic spirits that attack and molest you in the evening or attack and molest you in your dreams and you become their prey. You become subject to them. You lose your power and authority as a child of God and you are not able to escape or even pay the high price for the fire that you kindled. That is why the Lord calls this prophecy immolators of desire. You start a fire that you cannot contain. You start a conflagration, which means a huge burning that you are not able to put out. And pretty soon you are a slave to a habit that you cannot break. And that is where the yoke of sin begins to pull and choke at your neck. The next thing the Lord said was tell them to stop looking at pornography to stop looking at images that set their portals on fire. These images set them into high gear. And from that place, it is impossible to come down again without sin. Pornography is witchcraft. It is a spell that is cast upon you from an, from an image in the distance. This spell is cast upon your body. And once it is cast, though you strive and struggle in its nest, in its net, you cannot break it off unless I, the Lord, give you the power to do so. Pornography is a demon with many tentacles. Once you break off one or two arms, more of them will embrace you until your temple becomes choked and defiled with pictures that you cannot escape. These images will set a camp in your head and they will drive out the salvation that I gave you with the helmet to protect you. Stop looking at pictures that show what you wish you could be, what you wish you could do, what you wish you could have. Stop this. This was in capital letters. Stop this, for it is kindling a strange fire in your bodies, and that fire will kill you one day. The body is full of many gates and the eyes are such a gate, a very important gate. The eyes are such an important gate that they have a sin all to themselves. And that sin is called the lust of the eyes. It means that you set your eyes upon something, whether it's your neighbor's wife, like King David did, or whether it's your neighbor's car, or whether it's the promotion that your friend got, or whether it's the brand new house that your friend bought and you're still saving for your house and you can't afford it yet. Whatever it is, the eyes look. And when the eyes look, they desire. And that desire comes from the heart. They see and they covet. And then it begins to work in you to drive you to the point of sin. Pornography is no different. The Lord says that looking at pornography is participating in witchcraft for a spell is cast upon you from an image far away. You are looking at people involved in illicit sexual activity. You are not present with them, but as you gaze upon these images, they produce craven desires on the inside of you. And pretty soon, as he says, you do not need to be looking at them because you become defeated filed with it. And even when you're not looking at it, Satan begins to show you the, the database of pictures in your head. And therefore, even as you're trying to say, God, I'm so sorry, you will keep getting these pictures that defile you and you cannot stand before the grace of God. You cannot stand before his holy presence in a defiled state. You lose your right to keep coming into the presence of God to transact mature Christian business. When you have these kinds of sins in your life, secret, unconfessed, and most importantly, unconquered. Any sin that you do not confess, you cannot conquer. And any sin that you cannot conquer will rule you and strip you of the right to stand as a priest and as a king before the Father the last thing that the Lord showed me was an image of two men walking on the street in New York City. 
So there were two men walking down the street and one smacked the other one on the backside and then they stared hotly into one another's eyes and then they giggled and they gave each other that look that says, I'll deal with you later. And I was standing right there on the street in the vision and they walked past me. And as they walked past me, the Lord said, it is an abomination to lie male with male. It is an abomination to lie with a male as you lie with a woman. These have left the intended use of the female and now they are playing among themselves. They have become hardened in their brazen hearts. They have abandoned the rightful use of why I created them and they now perform unimaginable things in my presence. I am weary of bearing them. The time to answer their burning for sin in the flesh has come. And so as we are in this series, we will deal a lot with this issue for the Lord has brought it up a lot and it causes God pain because when he talks about men, especially doing this, the Lord has never really spoken to me about women doing this because to God, the head is the head. Headship is very important to the heavenly father. And because man is the head, it's understood that if God condemns male with male activity, we don't need to say, did he say anything about woman with woman? Or did he say anything about adults with children? Those all fall under the headship of Adam. If Adam is desecrating himself kind with kind, we don't need to ask what God has to say about Eve desecrating herself with another Eve. And so I saw a very disturbing image and I will not dwell on it too much. I saw different types of live animals, worms and strange small crawling flies and even maggots, I saw these things beginning to appear in the private parts of men and women, especially those who live in the cities. And the Lord was making me to understand that this will become a very prevalent problem in the end times. I kept hearing him say, as I saw these disgusting images, I will answer your burning for sin in the flesh. And people began to have an increase in living animals turning up in their bodies, whereby the STDs were no longer, oh, I have a flow or I have a itch or I have a smell. People were starting to have the same animals that eat trash. When you put trash in a dumpster, these animals began to appear in people's bodies and feast on them. And I saw that the doctors were extremely angry. The doctors were perplexed and revolted, but some of them were very mad because they couldn't understand what this person could have possibly been doing to get an infection that produces living worms or living little crawling things in their bodies. And I saw a few doctors puke, and I'm sure this was just a statement of how difficult it was for them. God was showing me this. And the Lord said that this will be the judgment for sexual immorality and for setting the body on fire with sexual sins. And the Lord said that those who entertain the moving pictures of sexual immorality, pornography, and also sexual fantasies should beware that these are sins of the mind and the demons who multiply depression, insanity, and different forms of mental illness will attack these people because they open the door to their mind to entertain images that are extremely offensive to the heavenly father. And the Lord says that these fantasies that people start off with will seem normal to them, but they will begin to get dark because demons will begin to become involved and manipulate the thinking of these people. And so these people will start acting out deeper and deeper fantasies because they won't be satisfied with the ones they started out with. He said that they will eventually end up in murder, child sacrifice and self sacrifice because the movies in their mind will drive them and play in their minds until they are forced to go and act out the pictures that they're seeing. And the Lord says that when they do this, when they actually begin to do things that will end up in murder or killing children or even killing themselves, they will be judged for their crimes by human courts and tribunals. 
So the Lord says that there will be a rise in suicides, murders, and also people going to jail. And all of this will start off simply because people were watching pornography. They opened the gates of their mind. They took off their helmet of protection. And eventually they will be judged by man. The Lord spoke of increases in child trafficking and prostitution, saying that these evils will become so, so great that people will even get on planes and fly to other countries where they can act out their fantasies of being with children, abusing underage teens, youth, and very young people in other jurisdictions where they will not be prosecuted, but they will simply be seen as a foreign visitor. And so these are the sexual sins. Um, and there was one last thing, which I cannot leave out. The Lord says that vast rings of pedophiles and pedophile networks will be uncovered. Remember this prophecy was from June the 12th, 2019. Large pedophile rings will be uncovered and people should watch over their children and protect them. Do not be unwise with your children. Care for them as you care for your own bodies. Um, sin is an unbearable weight on the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord says that he will not bear the weight of sexual sins any longer, but he will begin to repay these sins sharply, visibly, and harshly. He said that the different judgments for sexual sin will be death. That will be one rotting infestations, which is when I spoke of little animals that will begin to enter people's private parts is another. A third judgment will be exposure. You will be named and the things that you have done will be loudly proclaimed in front of the whole world, even in front of children. God will make sure that your sexual indiscretions come out and you will be named and branded so that you will be known and have no place to hide. Think of that man who was the gymnastics doc doctor. I think his name is Dr. Lazar. Um, the doctor who was the one who used to do the medical checkups for the young ladies um, for, the, for the US national gymnastics team. His name escapes me now, perhaps. I'm making a mistake with the name, but that kind of thing where your sexual indiscretions come out, where you're the coach and you've been abusing the boys on the team for, for four to five decades, but because you're the beloved coach that always brings home the trophy and brings home the football team's winning thing, the boys never speak out. They never press charges and they go away as damaged young men who some of them, they can't handle it. They kill themselves later. Um, or some of them become pedophiles or some of them begin to act out and show very violent behavior when they get into other sexual relationships. Why? Because they're acting out the pain that was done to them. God says that all these sexual sins will be punished and the punishments will be death. It will be sickness. It will be exposure and that everyone will know what the perpetrators have done. And we've certainly started to see God do this, but it will increase as we go along. And so this is the fourth prophecy, immolators of desire. Um, I am celestial and this is the master's voice. I understand that some of these prophecies are very distressing. Please understand that I don't have the luxury of opting out of them. I have to bring them exactly as God has given me them. And so all I can do is ask you to, to strengthen yourselves because here is something that we need to understand. These things are happening whether you decide that you can't watch or not. They're happening whether you decide that they're too graphic or not. Hiding away from them doesn't change anything. I haven't even started to reach to the prophecies where the Lord is speaking about the things in detail that are done to children. I cannot come and give a synopsis because people think this is very difficult. This is so hard to hear. It's hard to hear. It's also hard for me to see. And yet I see them by the grace of God and I'm able to withstand them and bring them to you in an objective fashion because the point is that God wants us to know what is going on. We can't stay in the dark anymore. The Bible says that the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man makes much power available. How are we going to pray effectually if we don't know what the issues are? How are we going to pray effectually if we are dealing with hidden sin ourselves? 
How are we going to pray effectually if we cannot first win the battle of fire burning in our members? How do we preach to anyone else when we are still battling secret sins in the closet? God wants to expose these things because he wants to heal those of us, whether you are saved or unsaved, however you find this video, whether you are practicing a lifestyle that America or any other nation that you are living in tells you is okay and acceptable, but the very fact that that lifestyle has to be called alternative tells you that it is a deviation from the norm. It is a deviation from what the Lord God says it's right. A government or a community can never answer for you before the throne of God. Now is the time to be transparent. Now is the time to be open about our spiritual weaknesses. Now is the time to fall on our knees in repentance and cry out to the Lord and say, Lord, I have this penchant. I have this hunger. I have this burning. I have this weakness. I've struggled against it for six years, 16 years, 60 years, and I've never gotten the victory of it. But now now I've heard the truth of the scripture and I do not want to be cut out of your holy presence. I do not want to be cast away from your pure position, your pure self on the last day. Help me, Holy Spirit. I confess that I am guilty. I am not going to hide behind any alternative lifestyle shtick because when I stand before you, all my excuses will be stripped away and I will not have anywhere to hide help me Jesus. It is this kind of heart's cry. It is this kind of genuine contrition that makes much power available. That is what effectual prayer is. It is true prayer in spirit and from your inner man asking for help for things that you cannot overcome. It is a tragedy to have your members lit on fire because Jesus said that for the sake of a wandering eye of a hand or hand that won't behave, the entire body, the entire glorious creation that you and I are can be cast into the lake of fire. Do not let that be your outcome. If you are having a problem in any of these areas, it is to God that you cry. It is to God that you confess. Your sin is not against me or any other member. It is against you first, and it is against the Father above all. Your contrition, your confession must be to Jesus from the heart. And that is where power out of the Father is made available to you by the blood of Jesus Christ to wash away that sin and begin breaking off the shackles that have kept you trapped to it for so long. I pray that these videos are helping, chastising, correcting, rebuking, and teaching people because these are very dangerous times to be in sin. This is Celestial with the Master's Voice. You can find everything about this ministry, including support, at the bottom link. Please visit the blog and watch, read these prophecies for yourself. And thank you for being here with me today. Until I see you again, goodbye.